Hello, I think we've got a great video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Okonos Hurricane 120mm class fan. At this time, I'd like to thank Okonos for sending me this uh, review sample of the Hurricane fan for uh, to take a look at and to make a review about. No money exchanged hands. Before we get into it, if you're looking for a TLDR, just a little recap, just jump to the bottom of the video. I have a very brief overview of the overall ratings of this fan, but I do recommend that you join me for the full analysis of this fan. So let's get into it. So this is comes in a five pack for $17, which means it's definitely a great value proposition. We'll need to see how it actually performs in, let's say, real results. Uh, hydro bearing, 800 to 1500 RPM, 67.19 CFM. You can see those stats there. Before we get into the data, I would like to thank Mint Mobile for being today's video partner. Thanks to Mint Mobile's wireless plans, it is possible to not only switch away from big, expensive mobile companies, but also to have a quality, affordable plan for me and my family. Mint Mobile's premium wireless plans start at just $15 a month for a three-month plan. For that, I can get high-speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I can bring my own phone and keep my current phone number. So you don't need to memorize a new phone number, something I have always found difficult. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones have, you can sign up and activate immediately right from your own phone, from the comfort of your own home. If by any chance your phone doesn't have an eSIM card, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. And right now for new customers, Mint Mobile is offering 50% off their 12 month unlimited plan. It's the best deal of the year, but it's only available for a limited time. If you're interested in learning more about Mint Mobile and switching, visit my link up above or the link in the video description down below. All right, here is the Hurricane. And well, obviously I have it spinning. It's at a fairly low RPM, so don't need to worry about nicking my fingers if I wanna make it stop. Uh, to take a look at the fan blades, but first let's do an overview of what we're taking a look at. So it's got some rubber pads in the corners on both sides, which is always nice to see, it just helps reduce a little bit of vibrations. But the overall frame is square and fairly basic. Not much of an inlet design, but there is a little bit. The edge distance to the other edges is average, I would say. The blade design is very reminiscent of something from the 2000s, 2006 era in terms of fans, but it is PWM, which is nice to see. The struts have a little bit of shape to them, so they're not completely flat. Um, dust, how does it pick up on camera? I don't know if you can see it, but there is dust that's built up on this, and it's been used very minimally in testing. So that could just be oils from my fingerprints, fingers from trying to touch it, or just build up naturally. Um, this is the only fan that I think I have that's had this problem. Uh, like my Noctuas and stuff like that don't have this kind of thing so uh it may be more prone to dust i can't say for certain just because it's limited in terms of how i test it but i just wanted to note that that i've noticed it on a couple of the blades uh, so either be careful not to touch it or it may require extra cleaning but overall it is just a very basic fan and assuming it does well in the value proposition it could be a great budget pick for um those of you who are very budget conscious in com your computer builds the first of our tests is the case simulation test taken at four key measurement locations that represent various size computer cases. The 6, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5 inch mark. 6 inch is a short throw distance like your half fans on the bottom of your computer case like my little example up here, blowing up towards your GPU or a small form factor case with an air cooler front to back airflow type design. This sort of test is most applicable towards air coolers in general. Uh, the 9 inch mark is, once again, just the distance from the front fans to that CPU cooler. This would be like a very compact tower. Think something that can hold a standard M ATX motherboard or MATX, but not a lot, a lot of extra room in the front of that case. Then you have the 11 inch mark, standard mid towers, and then the 14 by 5 inch mark, truly large tower. Something like the Fraud Design Torrent is a great example with the quantity of computer fans that are applicable to the size computer case that would sit in the floor of it. So that would be the length of it. So we need something to compare it against, and that's where my control fan comes in. It is based three parts, A12X5 to one part A14, blended together. So fans that 
a rank over top of it would be considered good, better, best, thanks to the rank underneath it, would be considered well poor performers to very poor performers. And unfortunately, the hurricane um, performs pretty terribly at this noise normalized result. At 100% PW fan signaling, it still falls short. So a optimized case fan, this is not. How about comparing against other fans? You need to ignore this little dip. It's just the way Excel sometimes uh, makes graphs. It doesn't actually go negative airflow. Um, it is among the worst fans I've tested. So most of these are in representative of good fans and then okay fans and then, um, well, the hurricane sitting back here by itself. Let's move on. Uh, putting into a bar graph form, you can kind of get an idea of it. Or this is an average ranking based on 6, 11, and 1,405, which marks. Um, it's last from this grouping of fans. Uh, moving up to my 18 decibel, or actually 7.5 uh, decibel ranking. Well, it's among the worst. The only one that is sitting rather close to it is the Storm 120. Um... We need to see how it does in value, because maybe there's something to be said there that'll be at the la in a later section of this video. But in terms of raw numbers, it's not hitting the mark. And we can see that. But again, take, take that note. Five fans for $17. Uh, at 100% PDOM fan signaling, it, same story. Let's just keep going. Um, 800 RPM, uh, not taking noise into consideration here. Just the ranking. It is well towards the bottom. Um, I'm only displaying the 6 and the 11 inch marks. It's towards the bottom. Um, at 1500 RPM, still ranking towards the bottom. Mind, if you're looking at the actual numbers, it's doing okay, but if we look at the, for small case, smaller case, that 6 inch mark, but for bigger ones, it's falling way, way behind. Uh, looking at the 9 inch mark, air speed versus noise in decibels and I have a cutoff for air speed of anything under 0.5 meters per second I'm not displaying because that's where the anemometer's limit is um, it's among the worst it isn't the worst ironically uh, this one right here which is the Swafan EX uh, 12 ARGB does rank worse than it but it is among the worst Taking a look at the same thing in Sone, we can ignore it because we already know it's ranking, just Sone is a different way of looking at uh, noise data. At this time, I'd like to thank you, my viewers, and my Patreon and YouTube members. You guys rock. It's viewers like you that are helping support this channel and making all of this testing possible. Um, recently, was able to convert my old gaming system into a test rig, so I'm starting to generate uh, thermal data and, uh, well, getting things ramped up and trying to really make these videos more optimized and better for, well, you, the viewers, to make it as interesting as possible. So once again, thank you all for joining me and watching it. So if you like what I'm doing, please think about uh, becoming a YouTube member or Patreon and just hitting the subscribe button really does help. Now we're on to airspeed through a CPU air cooler. I'm gonna have some thermal data that is brand new to this, but to keep things consistent with previous testing, I am gonna continue to measure airspeed going through it as well. So the first graph here is airspeed uh, versus RPM. And this is basically a blade efficiency graph. It's lining up very closely to my control fan, which is still three parts A12S5 to one part A14. In terms of that noise versus the airspeed, well, in lower RPMs, it does okay. But as things start ramping up, it falls way back. It gets really noisy for how much performance you're getting. <sighs> and this is comparing data for my radiator which is a Nem Nemesis 140 millimeter class radiator, very thick boy. 
uh, versus my Noctua U12A. And you can see they line up very, very closely. There is a small offsets depending on uh, where we're sitting, so RPMs slash noise levels. But overall, I think I can call them pretty close to equivalent. I'm not talking about thermal performance. I'm talking about resistance to airflow performance. So how does it compare against other fans? Well, it's sitting dead last from this group of fans that I'm displaying on here. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Let's move on. Uh, this is the brand new thermal data. So I'm applying a 150 watt load with a um, Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 cooler. Why do I have that cooler saying NHU12A? And the CPU is an i7 11700K. And I'm taking it at three data points, my noise normalized low, medium, and 100% uh, piton fan uh, signaling. And uh, well, just getting that thermals. And the Hurricane is sitting right here. Mind, I haven't tested that many fans, so it doesn't really give a lot of placement on here. And I'm not particularly happy with the way the testing is currently going. Um, unfortunately, I don't have access to every single fan that I've ever tested to be able to get full set of data on it. So I'm gonna just generate what I can. Um, but yeah, I'm not completely happy with it, but this is where the fans are in the applying right now. And thermal testing is really gonna be focused on version three of my testing methodology while I'm still in like 2.2, 2.3, whatever it is. Uh, so small iteration. So just kind of putting it in here for right now. Now we're at fixed RPM of 800 for that uh, performance going through it. And I have how the weighing factor was. So five six of it was airspeed performance to one six is noise performance. And the hurricane is sitting kind of middle-ish okay. Not a lot of variation here. Now its noise level is quite a lot higher than many of the other fans that do do better than it. And it's also worse than fans that are underneath it. So at 1,500 RPM, it's dropping lower in the pack, mainly because its noise level is higher and the weighing factor on it. Its air amount of air speed it produces, it's pretty okay, but it's just doing it in a pretty noisy way. Moving things up to 100% pedal fat signaling. And it's dropped way, way to the back. Mind, I don't really have any other 1,500 RPM fans on here. Um, but if you look at its noise level at 21.2, it is noisier than some of the other fans that are spinning more than 500 RPM faster than it. So it is just really noisy for how much airflow it produces and taking a look at it in another way. So uh, airspeed versus decibel rating. Decibels are horizontal. Airspeed is vertical. And it does okay at lower airspeeds, RPMs, but as things ramp up, it kind of falls back. It kind of looks like it's starting to catch up again as noise levels get higher, but at that point, it's already pretty noisy while their fans are just doing significantly better than it. Taking a look at the same thing, just in zone, so that it helps uh, squish together quieter noise levels while stretching out louder noises. And you can see really more clearly how it's positioned, where it's just a bit noisy for what it's able to perform. Now into my CFM test, it's a very simple test. You have a fan, you have a tube, you blow air down the tube, and you get airspeed. I think it's just basically a scientific exercise, but let's get into it. The control fan is the A12X25 only. It's not a blended fan anymore. And the Hurricane blade-wise for that CFM versus RPM is more efficient than my control fan. But once we take a look at that noise level, it's significantly worse. Let's keep moving. In terms of noise noise values for that CFM, well, it's towards the bottom. Well, well, towards the bottom. It's not the worst. I've started to realize why my analogers having trouble with reverse blade fans or certain other ones that spin in the opposite direction. And it's because the blade design on it is designed to spin in one direction and the uh, I'll explain it in another piece. But the circular motion of fan air is hitting it the wrong way, causing it to not work properly. At 100% peed on fan signaling, well, once again, it's still towards the bottom. 
uh, it's just not a top-end performer. And CFM versus that noise level, lower lower noises, lower RPMs. It, it stays close enough to the pack, but it just doesn't quite have that staying power. Mine, it does better in this test than other ones, but usually you're not going to have your fan hooked up to a tube and blowing air into your case. Uh, so I think it's limited on how useful this is. All right, now we're into value proposition. That's where this fan could be potentially very interesting because of how low the price is on the fan. Again, $17 for a pack of five, so that's like three, four dollars per fan. And at the sickness mark, it is the best fan here. Now, value proposition isn't raw performance. It is performance per dollar. So if you don't need a lot of airflow, it's potentially a very attractive fan. Now, when we look at a little bit bigger cases, the 11 inch mark, it's dropped way, way back because it doesn't have the staying power. But if you got three of these fans at the front of your computer case, it would, even though there's shooting air in every direction, it would create enough forward movement that I think it would carry it through the case. It'd be noisier than other fan options, but it could potentially do the job. Again, efficiency wise, not great. But if you're on a budget, it'll do the job. CFM, the best by by a lot. So again, blowing air down the tube. So if you can actually, you know, attach a little cone to the back of the fan and your case has the space for it, really, then best of both worlds, I guess. Um, CPU cooler testing. Again, this is the best value. What does that mean for this fan? We saw in the testing that it didn't rank particularly well. So a good quality heat sink uh, with a low powered CPU, this would work as a, I need a fan to strap to my heat sink until a new one arrives. This would do just fine. Or you're doing like a scrapyard wars that LTT does uh, and you just have a cooler, but it didn't come with a fan and you can get this pack of cheap fans and you slap it onto it and it'll do the job. That That's how I'd use this. It isn't raw performance. Um, so let's move on. So that brings me to conclusion time, kind of final thoughts about it. So CPU low wattage, I'd call it an average fan. It's really on the bottom end of that, but it's average. Uh, ranked 48.7 out of 130 fans. Its value is fantastic. So and high wattage CPUs, it ranks very badly. Don't use it on high wattage CPUs, it won't work. It won't work. Uh, ranked was over 113. Its value is still great. It just won't be able to handle cooling it very well. Uh, small compact cases, it does okay. Its ranking, its value is fantastic. Great, again, the highest of my tiers. Midsize and larger cases, it's it's ranked badly, very bad. Don't recommend it there, even though the value is average. So that's kind of my thoughts about it. It's you're on a budget and you need to, to fill out your computer case with fans. This will do the job. It won't do it well, but it'll do the job. And that brings me towards the end of the video. This is the raw data. The raw data does belong to me and my channel. And, uh, well, thank you all for watching Computer Tech and More, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. Or the, if you like what I'm doing, please think about becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon member. That money does go a long way in helping support this channel. Um, but just in the subscribe button does go a long way. And throw a like while you're at it, if you don't mind. Uh, but, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great one, and I'll see you next time.